In this lesson, we're going to be looking at advanced array algorithms, and we'll be looking at the intersection of two arrays. Now, what the intersection means is when you've got two arrays, you want to create a new intersection array. It's a brand new array that contains all the elements that appear in both of the arrays. So if it occurs in array 1 and in array 2, then you want to put it into your intersection. If it only occurs in one of the arrays only by itself, so it only occurs in, in array 1 or only occurs in array 2, then you don't want it. You only want the values that are similar to both arrays. So in order to do that, we're going to go through the following method. We're going to the following steps that you need to do in order to find the intersection of two arrays. Now, first of all, we're going to have a for loop that goes from one to the end of our first array. You can decide which one is your first array, but you're going to be going through every single element of that first array. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to check in each element of the first array with an element in the second array. So we're going to need a looping variable for the second array. And because we are not going to go from one to the end every single time, uh, we're going to use a while loop, in this case, a conditional loop. So we have to create our own looping variable, which means we need to initialize it to one. And at the end of it, at some point, we need to increment it so that it can go one, two, three, four. Okay. And the reason why we're not using a for loop is because we want to stop looking once we find a match. And to find out when we have a match, we're going to have a Boolean variable, which is going to be a flag, which is going to be initialized to false. And the moment we find a match, then we'll set it to true. So we're going to be looping through the second array, um, checking each value in the second array with the value in the first array. And basically, we're going to keep doing that until we find a match or we reach the end of the second array. And if we find a match, then what we need to do is we need to add that value because that's what we're looking for. We're looking for matches. Once we find a match, we add it to our new intersection array and then we need to say, hey, we found something, so we set our Boolean flag to true. So I've got a little demonstration here, a little uh, way to show you exactly how that's working with some examples. So let's have a look. So here we have two arrays. We've got our first array, which has four elements, and our second array has six elements. So what we're going to do is we're going to loop through the first array, every single value in the first array, and compare it with, a with all the values in the second array, or most of them, until we find a match or until we reach the end. So let's have a look. We're going to start off like this. So our first, our first loop, our for loop, is the red block there. It's going to go through each and every value in the first array, and we will end once we have checked every value in the first array. That's how we'll know that we've finished this algorithm. Once we've gone through from one, two, three, and four, once we checked all four of those numbers, then we know we have done. So now we're in our second looping, uh, or second loop, which is the blue value. We are setting it to one, and we set the flag to false, and we're going to loop through the second array until two possible things. The moment we find a match, we can stop looking because we found what we're looking for. We don't need to look any further. Or if we reach the end of the second array, if we reach the end of it, then there's obviously nothing else to look for after the second array um, is finished, there's no other value, so then we will re realize that we've gone through everything and have not found a value that matches. So let's get started. So we're going to compare the value in position one of the first array with the value in position one of the second array. So we're comparing that seven with the one. And if you can know your math, so seven and one, yep, that's, that's not a match. Those are not the same numbers. So we keep our red with number one, we're going to keep that value. We're going to go on to number two um, in the second array, which is a value of three and seven and three. Yep, that's also not a match. And then we're going to move on to value number, th or the third value, which is number two. That's seven and two. Yep, that's also not a match. And then we're going to go to value number four. And wait, wait what do you see? There's a seven and a seven. Well, what do you know? That is a match. We have found a match, so when we find a match, you can see our Boolean flag has been changed to true because we have found a match. And because it's true, our loop, our secondary loop, the conditional loop, will stop looking because we don't need to look any further. We, we found what we're looking for. We have found a match. So we've set the value to true, but before we move on, we must, forget, we must take that 7 and put it into our new array. There we go. We put that 7 into position 1 of our intersection array. There we go. We found a value. So now we can stop doing the blue loop. We're going to reset that back to one. And we are now going to move 
the for loop array, the first array, the first, sorry, the for, first loop is going to move on to its second value. And we reset the second loop to its first value to go on. So we're comparing position two now with all the values in the second array. So let's look there, that five and that one, yep, that's not a match. And we look at the uh, three and the five, yep, that's not a match. And the two and the five, yep, that's not the match. And you know what? I've gone a bit of a head because I can see what's going to happen here. The four, the five, the six um, in the second array, that seven, that four, that eight, those are definitely not five. So you, as you can see, those are all not matches. So in this case, we're going to reach the end of the second array. We're going to get right to the end and we would not have changed that Boolean flag. So therefore, we will stop looking after that. And so we will set the, the first loop. We'll move on to number three. And now we start again with position one of our second array. We're going to go right through to the end or until we find a match. So let's have a look. There's a three and a one. Yep, those are not the same. That's not a match. Let's move on to position two of the second array. Wait, wait, there's a three and another three. Those look very similar. Are they the same? Yes, that's a match. So we set the Boolean flag to true. And what must we do? We must add that three to our intersection array. And we can stop looking from this point on for that value because there's no point to move on. We found a match. Why would we want to look for anything else? So we then move on to the last value of our first loop. It's going to its final value, the fourth value. And we're going to compare from one until the end or till we find a match. So let's say we take the, the that number one in position four of the first array. And we're comparing with the position one in the second array. And let's have a look. What, what one? It, those are, is that a match? Yes, that's a match. It's true. So we set the Boolean flag to true, and then we add that one to our intersection array. So there we've added that value. Now we don't need to look anymore. We can end that loop for the second array. And you know what? We've reached the end of the first array, which means that that algorithm is now complete. And so what we left with at the end is this intersection array at the bottom there with just the three values that are the common values between both the first and the second array. Let's go look at the code and how we're going to do this. So here's our code. Before we get into the actual code, let's have a look at what we are dealing with. We're dealing with two arrays. There's our array first, which has eight values in it, and our array second, which has seven values in it. And we want to find the values that are common to both of them. And then we've got our intersection array, which goes from 1 to 10. 10 should be enough because in the, I don't know if you consider the worst or best case scenario, if all the values are exactly the same in both of them, if they all contain 10 values and the exact same 10 values are in both arrays, then you only need 10 spaces. So whatever is your biggest or your smallest, actually, your smallest array would actually be enough for your intersection. But in this case, just make it the biggest, the bigger, the better. And there's our intersize. That variable is going to determine how many values are in our intersection array. Okay, so there's our code, or there's our buttons. We're going to display both arrays, and then we're going to display the intersection array. And this is the code on, on this button that's going to actually do the intersection algorithm. Let's go have a look. So we set our intersection uh, array with how many elements are there. We do an intersection, so we set it to zero. So we start from the beginning. So Whatever's in there, we don't care about. We're going to start from the very beginning. Now, if you remember from our video, from the first part of the video, we had a red block that was going through each and every element in the first array. And that's what this for loop is doing. It's going from one till the end of the first array and checking each and every value in it. Now, when we loop the second array, that's the blue block in the, the de demonstration before this, um, we are not always going to go to the end of that array. We're not going to check all the values. We're going to start from one and go to the end. But if we find a match, we will stop. So that's why we need to create our own looping variable. So we created our second looping variable. This is for the second array. And we have a Boolean which says, hey, uh, if, we find it, if we find a match, we'll make this true. But at the moment, it's false. And this is what the loop is doing. It's going, while we are not at the end of the array, and while we haven't found a match, keep looking. The moment we find a match, we can stop looking. Or the moment we reach the end of the second array, we can stop looking. So that's all we're going to do. And we're going to go through. And we're going to check, basically, this is the first array 
you're looking at the first array's value, this is the red block, and compare it with the second array's value, which is looping, that's the second array loop invariable, that's the blue block. We're checking if the red block is the same as the blue block. If that is true, then it's a match. We made a match made in heaven, and therefore we must set B match to true, and at that particular point, let's say this was the very first element, we'll go, hey, increase integer, the intersection size to one because we found a value and we must put in position one whatever that value is from the first um, array. So if we found it as a match, go take that value, put it in our intersection array at position one. We always increase um, the size, the number of values in it first because we don't want to put this into position zero and put it in position one. So we say we found one and so increase it, and now into that position, position one, put it. And the second one we find, we will increase it to a two, and in position two, we will put that value. And this increase R2 is just the basically making the second looping variable go one, two, three, four, every single time after we've checked each and every one. And that's basically the algorithm. Um, that's basically what you need to do. So let's see how it works. So here we go. We can display both the arrays, so I can have a look over here. We can see all the values in the first array, and those are all the values in the second array. Maybe you can try to identify which ones are common between them both. You can pause the video to have a look there. Okay, now I'm going to display the intersection array. At the moment, we haven't run the intersection algorithm, so there should be nothing in there. Oh, where did it go? There. Click. There we go. Nothing's in them. Fantastic. Nothing's in the intersection array. Now this will run the intersection algorithm. So if I click on that, it's completed. So now if I click on display the intersection array, now we should see some different results in our intersection array. Well, there we go. So those are the five values that are in both array one and array two. So let's have a look there. So there is a seven there, yes. There's a three there, there's a two there, there's a one there, and there's an eight. There's just no four, 10, and six there. Hmm. Well, let's have a look here. So there's a 1, yes. There is a 7, yes. There is a 3, yes. An 8 and a 2, yeah. But there's no 4. And there's no 10. And there's no 6. There's no 4, 10 or 6. There. And just there's no 9 or 8 in the other one. No, there is 8. Right? There's no 9 and? No, just a 9. 9 and 5. And there's no 5 in this array. So those are the ones that aren't common. So there we go. So that's how you do an intersection of two different arrays so that you can get one array that contains all of the common values of both of them. Well in this video we found lots of matches and I hope you find lots of matches on our YouTube channel. You can find some videos that can help you as well as other videos relating to arrays and other Delphi content. Um, please subscribe, please follow us on Facebook or Twitter. We'd love to hear your feedback and remember don't do it the long way, do it the Mr. Long Way.